really um, a full-blown uh, piece of art that you can watch the process. But I wanted to talk. I wanted to break things down for you just a little bit and kind of talk to you about certain things and the one thing that i want to talk to you about starting off here is um bumping edges and there's probably not another artist that calls them that it's just something i kind of came up with and uh, so uh, that's what i call it and we're going to roll with it right now i'm just going to start with this sheet of paper that i have here it's just a it's just an, a painting that didn't work out on the other side so this is just using whatever I have on hand here. I'm just gonna grab some green and I'm just gonna just put some lines down. I'm just gonna make some uh, grasses here. And I'm using two different greens. I'm using olive green and undersea green. And so just some texture, just creating some interest there. And if I wanted to make the stems a little bit thicker, then get a different brush. And then you can make heavier ones. And maybe, maybe make just some loose, not contrived uh, leaves. Because we're trying to be loose, so we don't want we don't want to see this. We don't want to see all this. We don't want to see all this beautiful loose happening, okay? And then all of a sudden we have a leaf that's like this, okay? It's, and then you might have another one that's over here. And so you have all these like, loose leaves and they just look they can sometimes look a little bit too put on like i'm trying to help it out here because i can't help myself okay so as you can see this one's gotten tighter because i'm getting too much information and I'm being too specific and here I'm being a lot looser. But as you know, this pigment's been sitting on here for just a minute or two. What I wanna show you is you take your brush and I want you to bump the edge, okay? And release that pigment, but don't do this. Okay? Don't do this where you're making bands and um, lines. So then maybe you're gonna do this and loosening it up like that, okay? So what you're doing here, what I'm seeing are these bands of pigment that you're loosening up, okay? What I want you to do is Get, get a bigger brush and get in there and blend that out. Blend it out. Okay? That's what I want you to do. Okay? Um, blend it out. See how haphazard I am with it? But I am blending it all out. No, I don't want to see bands. I, I really don't want to see bands. Just get that pigment moved around, okay? Now, there's still a lot of dry area on this paper, okay? And if you have the heater going in your house, those areas are going to dry up on you real fast. Now, this one, there's like a little puddle here, okay? For me here in Florida, it's a rainy day too, so um, I'm just gonna grab my puddle. I'm just gonna control that and pick that up because I don't want, um, when I get the other pigments down, I don't want them pulling into those puddles and creating a mess, okay? So that's what I want you to do with, um, 
with bumping edges. I don't want to see, uh, I don't want to see bands again. We'll do that one more time. Let me just get another, we'll do another one here. So we have all these grasses and stems coming out of the ground and then maybe we'll make a thicker use a bigger brush just throw in some leaves and of course we don't want to do we don't want to do this okay we don't want to do this it's just it's it doesn't feel right for the loose painting, okay? Um, if you wanna keep it loose and do it the way that I'm doing it, I say no to this, okay? This is much better, but don't do the bands of color. Okay, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing these bands of color. I don't want to see that. Now, let's just get some flower head color. I'm just going to get a Janet's Violet Rose here. And I'm just going to kind of drop in a head. And I'm just going to go in and drop in a head. I'm just kind of letting the brush kind of be, being really loose about it, okay? So now I have these sections um, and so wherever you have a head, you kind of want to, you don't want to let it just sit there um, floating in space. You want to, um, you want to put the pigment in the base of the pigment and then let it do its thing. Um, so make sure you attach your flowers. Having your flowers just kind of floating. Some of, if you had a really busy sheet, okay, um, it's okay to have some of them, but if you're just doing a few flowers, you really need to attach those heads. So I'm just dropping that pigment into the base of those flowers. Wherever I see a flower forming, I'm just going to drop that pigment. Okay, things have gotten really, really loose there. And now you're also wanting to know how do I increase the values here of what I've thrown down. Go ahead into your, there's your pigment, okay? Straight out of the tube, okay? I'm gonna go straight into it, okay? Now I'm gonna take what I've put on this brush and I'm gonna go straight on to the paper. Now this paper is semi wet, some areas are dry, so you're going to have some areas that are more diffused than others. And just go ahead and increase the value by doing that. Again, let's go to this one. I'm going to go straight into this well. and so, There's some water starting to form in there, and that's fine, but the more water that forms in there, um, it dilutes it a little bit. So just keeping it really strong, I'm just building up some of that and just increasing my values here. And going back into the paint, some of this is starting to dry. And there, I dropped too much down, so I'm just gonna back just a little bit of that out. I'm gonna grab another brush because that liner is not letting me do what I wanna do here. I'm 
Okay, so we have our buds now and we want to blend those out a little bit. So we don't want to make bands. We don't want to make it look like all of this stuff is just going upward, right? We don't want to just do that. Where there's a light section and there's this band of color and then you do it over here and then maybe you're doing it over there and again over here. So you have all of these bands of color. It doesn't make sense, okay? What we wanna do is take that band of color and blend it out, blend it out. But try not to close everything in. Try not, and not everything going up, you're gonna want some stuff moving downward and you're going to want to activate some of the, the green also and maybe right into the center again leaving some of those white areas white do not close those all in okay let's go to this one we need to bump edges on this one and i'm not going to make bands okay i'm just going to loosen what's down I don't want, and this one was like all going whoosh up. It was looking really bizarre. So I'm gonna spin this around and see what's going on. Now I'm seeing puddles. The minute you start seeing puddles fall, um, come into play, see this is this green and pink is coming together and it's getting a little bit weird. And same thing here. Um, if you let it sit there, it could look a little bit muddy. So to keep your paintings really fresh, go in and just lightly pick up those puddles. You can let that pattern of what it was kind of uh, mingling and doing happen and let the colors that did kind of form happen. We're gonna let those dry. But right now I'm just grabbing those puddles Anywhere that it's just sitting, you sometimes have to look to the side and look for those puddles. Or you may find me do this on some of my tutorials when there's puddles, okay? And just roll a piece of paper across. This is just one ply paper. It has no print on it. So that means that print will not transfer when you push it down into the pigment because you can imprint the print that's on the paper into your painting. And you don't wanna see that happen, okay? So you could just go in and just kind of lightly pat. Now remember, if you go like this with your hand and you pull it up, you're gonna have a handprint. So just keep that in mind. I'm just barely touching this, okay? The paper is basically doing its own thing. And then go in and grab your tissue and pull it off. And you're gonna say, oh my God, you erased so much of it. Don't worry about it. We're gonna build on top of that. But this also gives you a nice foundation to what you're doing, okay? now. We can study what's going on here. And I still, this area that we created these pigment bands is still there, okay? I'm not a huge fan of that. So we could go in and do a little bit of blending. Trying not to close everything in, okay? Anything that looks like it's not quite feeling right, go in and get it to, uh, to blend properly. Okay, so now, now that we have this down, um, this is drying, okay? We can do a little bit of this. This will allow some of that water and pigment to kind of move around a little bit and loosen things up naturally. You can do something like that which is kind of fun to do. Let's put a little sunny yellow in here. How about that? I'm just gonna grab just a little bit of yellow I have here to the side 
and I'm just gonna shake just some sunny yellow in, okay? Now you're saying, what do I do with that? Well, let's just let's just kind of play with it and blend some of it. So I'm, I I look at what's going on. We want it to kind of make some sense, but I just like to sprinkle in just a little bit of yellow because it helps make the painting um, sunny and. So now we have, so now we have uh, some yellow into play. So it's not just Janet's violet rose and the green. Now we have the, that yellow. Use whatever yellow you have. Mine, oh God, which one is it? I don't even know which one that was. That was Permanent Yellow Deep by Magello. That would have been this color right here. Okay. And Janet's, by, and that's by Magello. And, the, and I have Green Appetite Genuine and Olive Green down. And Janet's Violet Rose by American Journey is what the pink color was. Now, we have this sitting here and it looks really nice and loose, as you can see, okay. We still have some, we have some really cool effects happening here. I mean, at this point, again, I have water rolling. I see a puddle still moving. And that was probably from shaking that yellow onto the paper. And we could let this dry, and I'm gonna do that. I'm, but instead of just letting it dry naturally, I'm gonna hit it with the dryer here. Okay, so it's, it still has some damp spots, but that's better than it was. See, it's still, still quite floppy. I can feel that it's still wet through the backside. So this is still a very wet sheet of paper, but that surface puddles have kind of been taken care of a little bit here. Okay, so let's let's just pump it up. We're gonna just grab the quill. I'm gonna just go in, get this wet. I'm just gonna go in. I'm just gonna grab just a little bit more of Janet. It's Violet Rose. I'm just trying to um, build these areas back up. Remember when we took that tissue paper to it? It kind of took it away and kind of assess what's going on, what needs to happen. Let's just do a little bit of this. I'm just gonna drop in just a couple little sprinkles. because I do this, you might be wondering, well, what's the purpose of putting these splashes on here? I want the viewer, when they look at the piece, to know immediately we have a watercolor here. And so that's why I like to put the splashes in. Um, but when we're working with the Dr. P.H. Martin Bleed Proof White, what we'd wanna do, if we were to do some of those splashes, I don't necessarily wanna use this right now, but I'm going to. Um, you don't wanna put this on super dry paper because you won't get the effect that what you want also. So I've got my quill loaded up with that, and then I go in and I dip it in some more and really get it wet and shake that on and this stuff can make your painting muddy real fast. Now remember that quill was loaded with lots of water. So I'm seeing stuff happening. So you don't wanna put that stuff down and do little splatters on your painting uh, because then it looks like you brushed your teeth in front of your painting. We don't wanna see that. Um, so I'm just going in and um, assessing what's going on. If it looks like it's kind of 
um, not fitting in, it doesn't feel right, then we get rid of it. Now, I do have, because this was the back side of my painting, the back side of this paper was an old painting that didn't turn out. I'm gonna go in and hit these edges down here at the bottom with the bleed proof white and cover those up while that paper's kind of wet too, it kind of helps. I'm just gonna help this out. Just clean up my edges here. And anywhere that you don't like something, now's the time to kind of hit it. And um, try to make sense out of it. It's kind of going along the edge of this paper because it's all whatever I used on the last painting was seeping around the corner here. Okay. Just adding more water so it blends a little bit more because I don't want blotchy. Again, anything I don't like. So we have that. Now what we can do is we've, we've lost some of the stem work in here. It got really loose, but we can tighten that up a little bit and we could just drop in just a little bit more of the green. And again, the paper is still, so it's diffusing. The green is going up into the pink, but I don't want it to go too far, so I'm gonna kind of control it. and Just kind of stop the bleed and go in and drop that pigment. Okay, so I like the soft yellow in the background from doing that little splash. Now, what else do I see that I need to deal with? Um, the Green Appetite Genuine um, kind of made kind of a pretty gray kind of blue color here, which is really quite cool. Um, what I could do is I could add just a little bit of my favorite because my name would not be Deborah Lynn if I didn't add opera pink. Put my opera pink down and I can just do just a little touch of this opera pink. Just drop just a little bit of that in. And let that kind of diffuse a little bit. And 
and I go around and I kind of assess what's going on and anything that seems like it needs some help. I just help it along a little bit. This flower is really not quite, I'm not quite feeling it. I'm not sure that big green blob there is kind of bugging me, but I don't want to mess around with it too much because then I could really mess up the whole thing. There always seems to be one thing in a painting that will chase you. And this one is seems to be the guy that's going to kind of give me a little trouble. So I'm just playing with, a, with that little bit of um, opera pink there. I just want to just bring a little bit of it in. Now I'm going to clean my quill. I'm going to go into the opera pink. Okay, I've got my brushes loaded with opera pink. Now I'm going to go in, grab some more water, and I'm just going to, the paper is wet, and I'm just going to drop just a little bit here and create this line of interest here. And that's it. I'm not gonna, nothing more. So as I'm painting, I'm assessing what's going on, um, the composition. So I want the eye to travel around. And this one, I need to bump it up just a little bit. So I think I've lost that one. This one is still a problem child. It's just gotten away from me. Here's my problem. You're gonna be watching me try to figure out how do I rectify this problem child. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pick up some pigment here because I'm gonna to have to rebuild that. Everything else seems to be okay to me. We just need to rebuild him. Okay. I don't want it to be opera pink. That's too bold. That I was just going to use for just a little bit of fun. But I loaded up the Janet's Violet. And drop that in. And just let it sit for a minute. And what I could do here is because I have this open space here, I could just go in. I'm, I've got this Janet's Opera that I just, I Janet's Violet that I put on here. Now I can go in and just get a little bit more water on my brush and just go ahead and just sprinkle in just a little bit here. Um, that kind of fills that in ever so slightly. Clean my brush out, put it to the side. Gonna get my liner brush. Gonna fill that up with just a little bit of green, Appetite Genuine. And I'm gonna drop that into the base here. And right there's a base, and right there's a base, and there might be one back here. And you don't have to take this like all the way down. You don't have to do that. You can just go just so far and because you have all these other grasses that you put in earlier, the brain kind of connects all those lines together, okay? So you don't need to be doing that. Uh, the more you try to make them look like stems that go all the way down to the ground when you're working loose, you don't need it. You lose a lot when you do that. When you start getting too, uh, getting too much into your head or you're enjoying yourself and you just wanna keep playing, don't. 
don't. Uh, we all do it. I do it. We have to teach ourselves to just stop. Put it aside. Let it dry. Come back to it later. Assess if it actually needs more. Okay? And sometimes you want to work on it when the paper is still uh, wet. Okay, so right now I have, from what I'm studying here, everything seems to be fine. Not every single thing, especially in the back, the further back, like this one right here, looks like it could be a flower. I don't need to put a stem on it. Let the brain do the work on its own. Um, but this one that seems to be kind of right here in the front could probably, uh, it looks like there might be two flowers kind of right here, kind of forming. So let's just go like this, okay? And just kind of connect those. And again, I go in and build up what I need to build up because as things dry, they fade out a little bit and we just have to um, add to them. And everything seems to be fine. The only thing that's bugging me is this little flower here off to the side. What I see, oops, stuck my hand right in the white. Um, I see a green stem, but the flower itself seems very, um, very uh, insipid almost. Kind of needs just to pick it up just a little bit. So I'm just going to go in and just kind of, um, liven it up a little bit. Gonna go in now with my green right there at the base and let that green disperse, okay, within the wet pigment that I put in. So those two are gonna come together and kind of connect that base of that flower. And because I already had a solid oop, thing of green there earlier, It was looking a little bizarre, so I had to kind of keep working with it there. So this is the beauty of loose watercolor. It's, it's allowing um, yourself to be really, first of all, yourself to be really free in your movement. And everybody's movements are gonna be different. Mine are going to be different than someone else's where it's the way we express ourselves. So use however you, your hand wants to put those buds down. You know what I mean? Um, be self-expressive in your own way. Create your, your flowers however you want. Use whatever kind of brushes you want. Different brushes will create different flowers. Um, but I love these field of flowers that I've been painting recently, as you see here. Um, so I'm on this thing doing these right now. And that's okay. You can do a million of them like, like this. And, um, or maybe you're on a roll where you like to do containers. Now, as I'm talking to you and I'm looking at this painting, I'm seeing three separate paintings. Do you see that? I'm seeing this big hole here, and I'm seeing this big hole here. I'm not worried about what's going on here, and I'm not worried about what's going on here. These two areas are kind of bugging me a little bit. I'd like to connect it somewhat so we can do that. So let's just get our skinny liner. And I'm just going to just connect these areas just a little bit more than they were. Now I just dragged my brush through that one dot of pink. And so I'm just gonna blend that out so it looks, it almost looks like there's pink in the background now. So like this one, I kind of this dirty water on there. 
So now my eye, when I'm looking at this on the camera, I'm now seeing it's connected. Now I can go in with a little bit heavier pigment and kind of, you know, really put a little bit darker value into these areas also if I wanted to. And just kind of let it right here, there's a puddle and it's kind of dispersing and I kind of like this. And here it's doing some really cool granulation, breaking up and doing something neat, letting it do its thing. And I think that's it for this painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, be safe out there, stay well, don't get sick, and